This uh, reading is How to Defeat a Conservative, Part 3, by William J. Eisenman, Ph.D. History reveals that conservatives have a penchant for misreading facts and statistics in order to have them agree with their ideology. They skew results and spin the truth. During the Congressional debate on Medicare in 1995, Newt Gingrich and John Kasich maintained that growth from 4800 to $7,100 over seven years was not a cut. But their figures were not in constant inflation-adjusted dollars. When pressed on the subject, Kasich admitted and maybe they were being a little intellectually dishonest. No, they were lying. I hope the, uh, uh, the uh, torrential downpour here is not uh, getting on mic because uh, it's quite, uh, quite bad. Continuing. We defeat the conservative when we bring to the debate his mysticism. The conservatives being dealt with here regard themselves as some form of Christian. As such, they believe in faith. In doing so, this leads to a distorted worldview, especially when that faith is in an ideology that lacks reality. Their Christian worldview is eth ethereal and lacks a scientific premise. This is one reason why the goals of conservatism must be advanced by propaganda. Conservatism can only sneak into the hearts of the susceptible. It cannot be welcomed in. In order to defeat a uh, counterfeit uh, conservative Christian, he must be forced to prove his God. And this must jive with the Bible. These proofs must be tangible. These proofs must not be incomprehensible pronouncements like those issued by Pat Robertson and all of our prosperity preachers. At the present time, conservative mysticism leads to pedantry and ready-made answers. There is no deductive reasoning, analysis, or logic. Political leaders who are mystical are called few. Today's political conservative tries to play the part of a populist, while in his heart of hearts, he's an elitist. Conservative William F. Buckley Jr. got his $100,000 startup money for the uh, National Review magazine from his father. As pointed out earlier, neither Rush Limbaugh nor Newt Gingrich wrote their books. Newt Gingrich never held a private sector job. In these instances, the conservative preaching of self-reliance, rugged individualism, and the up-by-the-bootstrap philosophy did not apply. In the real world, money and power trump talent and hard work most of the time. Conservatives are defeated when their talk of tax cuts and keeping what they earned is exposed as crass greed. Conservatives are vulnerable on the lack of compa compassion issue. Conservatives are defeated when their revolutionary zeal is exposed as mere pedantry, the old dress up in new garb. Many conservative ideas cannot stand the test of debate and close scrutiny. This is why Rush Limbaugh does not have guests on his show who might have different opinions from him. And this is why, in 1996, Limbaugh prepared his audience for Bob Dole's defeat at the hands of Bill Clinton in the presidential debates. True conservatism can only flourish in one-sided venues and among controlled audiences. 
Without propaganda and faith, conservative ideas cannot survive in the free marketplace of ideas. The real world is beyond their understanding. Right-wing Christian conservatism crumbles when its religious underpinnings are undermined. There is no understanding among conservatives that the God of the Bible is apolitical. Conservatives try to use God to further their crass and greedy political goals. Conservatives can be defeated if they are prevented from polarizing the electorate. They can be defeated when they are forced to heed the words of God that the truth is the hypothesis that works. Once, on his radio show, Rush Limbaugh admitted to having no compassion for the poor. Just this statement alone shows that Limbaugh is a phony Christian. The Bible teaches the opposite of Limbaugh's statement. How is it that Limbaugh has any credibility at all? Conservative Republican Senator Phil Graham once said, quote, We're the only nation in the world where all our poor are fat. Unquote. Because of this belief in this myth, he wanted to cut the food stamp program, which is a program that needs more funding, not less, especially today. This ignorant man had no idea that being well-nourished, or in his words, fat, has nothing to do, excuse me, well-nourished has nothing to do with obesity. Conservatives usually gravitate to simple and sometimes stupid answers to the difficult problems of life. This acts as a hindrance to societal and mental evolution. If we all seek a better life, then conservatism must be defeated and must be laid to rest and must never be allowed to rear its ugly political head ever again. The dung of conservatism must be buried deep and the tombstone on the grave should read, here lies political conservatism. May its stench rest in peace forever. Section 1. Censorship, Selfishness, and Conservatism. Chapter 2. What is Obscenity? Conservative ideology in one form or another is usually behind the wish to censor. Many conservatives are offended by pornography, do not like bad words except in private. Much of the time, conservatives do not like government secrets being leaked to the public. And many right-wing religious conservatives do not like to hear bad things about God, even if they are true. When in power, conservatives prefer to conduct government business in secret. They do not trust the public at large. It is a sure bet that whenever there is a campaign for censorship, conservatives will be spearheading the attack. In regard to pornography, most conservatives call the things that offend them obscene. But what is obscenity? For several decades, America's courts have wrestled with the question as to what is obscene. The United States Supreme Court came up with a vague and inaccurate definition simply because obscenity is a personal value judgment. This personal value judgment has been different at different times in our history. Personal value judgments make bad law. When Justice Potter Stewart said of obscenity, I know it when I see it, he was being truthful. 
but he was making a personal value judgment. He knew what he thought was obscene, but he did not know what others might think was obscene or not obscene. Still, local governments and the Supreme Court have wasted millions of dollars in time trying to define obscenity and punish those who deal in it. These were wrong priorities. It seems sometimes courts prefer to take on obscenity cases rather than real criminal cases. One of the arguments against obscenity in pornography is that they corrupt character and lead to antisocial behavior. This argument, however, is without merit, has never been proven, and is based on faith and myth. Once, in the history of our nation, judges and governors believed witches rode through the sky on booms on their way to the Black Sabbath. Not one shred of evidence exists to support the assumption that obscenity or pornography leads to moral corruption or antisocial behavior. On the other hand, there is ample evidence that money can do both. There is some evidence that exposure to pornography and obscenity may lead to sexual evolution and emotional maturity. President Nixon's Commission on Obscenity found no evidence that exposure to explicit sexual material plays any significant role in the causation of delinquent or criminal behavior among youths or adults. To be continued, the end.